And we're live, guys. Welcome to Smarter Not Harder, where we serve up practical tips, tricks, hacks, and how-tos to boost your brain, body, and fine-tune your fitness, health, and wellness. That is right, guys. I'm Coach Michael Merlino, Houston-based running coach and fitness trainer. I've got 23 years of experience in fitness um, and getting people fit and getting them to their finish lines in life and on the race course. And I'm Dr. Hazenbank. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a functional movement and sports injury specialist uh, with 20 years of experience helping you move better, hurt less, and have more energy and less stress. That's what it's all about. Um, guys, we truly believe that the tips we're going to share with you on this show put a lot of thought into it. Um, if you just take these things and build them, put them into your life, all these different clients and runners and triathletes that we've worked with over the years, Put this stuff into play, and we truly believe you can be a better version of you and be probably a better, a more youthful version of you, regardless of your age. So come with us. We're going to help you train and work smarter, not harder. All right, guys. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. So um, how you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. How are you? I just need a haircut. You get a haircut, I'm good. And we're about to open back up our running program here in Houston uh, when the state opens it up here in Texas next week. So I'm looking forward to seeing the peeps again. Yeah. I miss them, man. I miss them. I bet. Yeah. Um, so what are we going to do today, guys? Um, let me go over some housekeeping stuff, things. I want to remind you guys that are either watching here on uh, live on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, first off, let me let me pull up a slide here. But. Go ahead and subscribe to the show um, or like our Facebook page. Okay, I'm going to pull that up for you right now. Um, one second, we'll pull that up. Um, yeah, facebookcom harder You can go to or youtubecom um, youtubecom um, uh, in flight running for this first show. We'll have a show up pretty quick. Um, I'm just going to skip that. We'll just keep going here. Um, having issues with my, my screen share here. Um, so Facebook users and you guys on that are watching on YouTube, if you've got any questions during the show, go ahead and put them, just put them in the comments section. We can pull those up on the screen. I would love to have your name. I would love to, to know where, where you're tuning in from, what country, what city, what state. Okay. So we can pop that up. So anytime during the show, put that in there that we can go through the feed. We can figure out your questions. Okay. Um, and uh, all the articles and resources, thing we're gonna sh things we're going to share with you guys today, we're going to have them. We're going to put them, uh, post them on Facebook and on YouTube in the notes, so you can go back and refer to those. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of transition right in, JD and Doc, and um, kind of go right into uh, what we want to do on the show every week is just kind of talk about what's in the news. And obviously, the big uh, thing we're going to talk about today is lean is king so the whole idea here is um is just you know we're going to talk a lot about muscle today it's all going to be about muscle and the, the big benefits of strength training and things like that okay um just have a good open discussion about that we're going to talk about some of the fitness history of strength training and how um what was done in the 30s it's it's kind of being done now and guess what it still works okay with all this technology we have it's really going back to the simple concepts that we've kind of known about for about a hundred years. Okay. And also, so, also it's about um, you and me, like just sharing what we always share with all of our clients, being able yeah. to actually not only share with and remind our clients of the things we share with them, but also so people from the outside who don't work directly with us can also learn along the way. Yeah. And that's, that's, what's cool. I mean, that you know working with you doc is we've got plenty of living breathing case studies yeah. that we can share yeah. you know and um and that's what we want to really do at the show is tell these stories you guys aren't alone here i mean if you've had a tough time with anything or had a challenge i guarantee you someone else has had that same challenge somewhere right and we can probably tell that story multiple times so well tell tell them the story of when you got into like really realizing that having muscle uh, mass and particularly lean muscle mass was important for you in your running. 
Um, well, it, you know, oh, actually when tell, I, tell the plate story. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's tonight's show, but I'll tell yeah. it quick. Um, fell twice, actually fell three times. First three marathons. I totally fell that one got a uh, really bad soleus injury. You know about those doc. Yeah. Not, not right. fun. Calf injury. Um, what was the other one? I failed. It was, it was I, uh, Honolulu, San Diego, Houston Marathon, done, done, and done. The, the, the worst one was when I dropped a 25 pound plate off a leg press machine at the downtown Ooh. Y and um, fractured my big toe, looked like a T bone steak on a fracture. And it was like totally displaced the toe. And that's where I ended up in Dr. Ross's office, which he's going to be on the show tonight, but in flight show tonight at eight. He literally pieced me back together like Humpty Dumpty. The good thing back then, I was a pretty muscled up guy. Like you wouldn't recognize me compared to, I actually had biceps back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but he pieced me back together, anesthetized my toe, literally manipulated the bone, shot me up so I couldn't feel it. Didn't want to do cert. But the cool thing about it, and that's what I love about working with guys like you, his first question was, so do you want to run a marathon? You still want to run your marathon? I'm like, heck yeah, I want to run a marathon. Nice. So he's like, okay, we can't cut on you then because you'll heal well. Cause he, he goes, dude, you're muscled up. You're in shape. Nice. You're going to heal fast. So I'm going to just manipulate the bone. And I, I multiple trips over the x-ray machine until he got it nice and tight. And then he casted me up to my knee or my knee hard cast and said, you can't do anything for six weeks. So that guy saved my running career. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't be coaching all these great people. Um, you know, and then at one point I think I ended up in your, yeah. um, Ended up in your office because yeah. I had some I was a quirky plantar fasciitis thing or something. So yeah, takes a village, you know. And then you you were into triathlon too, right? Like I was, train. yeah, yeah. So not only was I training for triathlons, I became a um, USA triathlon coach uh, in order to be able to help to uh, help not only the coaches but the athletes work smarter, not harder. Yeah, 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 and it's uh, you know so. We, could, we might as well talk about this in the front end, our own stories, because yeah. you know, we struggle with this stuff like everybody else does. I'm basically going back to like what this layoff has done for me. It's like, OK, time to go back to what I did when I was in my mid 30s. Yeah. And that was lifting heavier, uh, you know, packing more muscle on uh, because the whole definition definition of aging is really losing muscle tissue. Um, and so far, so good. I, I've got I've got a ways to go. I know you've packed some muscle on recently. You may want to tell your story about that, how you yeah. learned out pretty good. Absolutely. Well, for the last 10 years, I have been decreasing in muscle mass and increasing in body fat. And my blood sugar had been going up, different mm. markers were going up. And it was really frustrating because I'm a you know intermittent faster. I eat really well. Um, I take care of my body. And so I'm a fairly you know, healthy individual to sometimes an extreme. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes my morning supplement routine, you know, is a you know, little small Dixie cup of supplements popping in. Yeah. But, but all that was barely staving off this aging process. And it, and it was really frustrating because I see it in other people too. So your metabolism is changing because your muscle mass is going down and you just don't have that resilience. So finally, I got so frustrated um, running the gamut with all these different ways. I finally found a concierge doc, went to him. He spent like three hours with me and he was like, dude, your testosterone's low. And I was like, well, I could have told you that. I did the test 10 years ago. And he goes, would you ever do anything about it? And I said, yeah, I mean, I did shots. So but a lot of people are like, well, that's just part of aging. Right. There's nothing you can do about it, right? And there is, right. there is something and, to do about it. And I was like, I did some shots. I didn't notice really any difference. Um, and he was like, did you do the bioidentical stuff? And I said, no. And so um, this MB really helped to piece me back together. And he goes, okay, let's get your levels. And here's the hilarious thing, Mike, is um, my testosterone levels were the age of a 75 year old. Wow. At 46 years old. Was your, had, was your energy just crap? It was, I mean, I was crap. exhausted at the end of the day. I mean. I, I would go work out. I would get sick. You know, it was one of those things that I felt like I was losing an up. I was losing a downhill battle trying to 
push a brick or push a boulder uphill. So finally he was like, hey, he goes, you can try it. Let's do some bioidentical stuff. Um, let's also uh, help your blood sugar out. We'll do you know some metformin there. And then boom, it was like two months goes by. And I told my wife, I said, I said, my shirts are tighter. And I said, it just feels like I'm putting on masks. And the honest truth, the honest truth is I have a very physical job and I'm a very physical yeah. guy and I wasn't lifting anything, but I was working the yard. I was living life. I was moving bodies all day long and my traps are growing. My shoulders are growing my back. And finally I get on the scale and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've gone from 225 pounds up to 240. Wow. I said, but, but yet, back. but yet my, my waist is the same size. So finally I called him up and he did a, real detailed body comp, which gets into what are you made of, which would be yep. a good subject next. He did my body comp, which tested lean muscle, tested bone, tested water, uh, intracellular, extracellular water. So I got a good reading of where that was. So I went back two months later because I called him up. I said, hey, doc, I said, my waist size is still the same size, but I'm, I'm like 15 pounds heavier. And we go in and we test the body comp. And I'm shocked. I get off and my lean has gone up by, you know, almost 20 pounds. Yeah. And my fat mass has gone down five pounds. But yet my waist is still the same size. But the scale says, yeah. my gosh, you're gaining a ton of weight. So I've got a guy, I've got a guy to that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, retired from the Baylor College of Medicine. And uh, he, uh, in, what is it? Tom is probably 70 now. And he worked, he had, he, he, since he worked for Baylor, he had the full medical makeup. Like he's yeah. got all the best doctors in town because he's at Baylor. Yeah. So um, he, he had all the tests done. And, and one of his docs, actually, another guy I worked with, a uh, sports doc over there, uh, Dr. Harrell over there, um, was like, you need a trainer. <laughs> so he started working with me. And I told him, I'm like, we're just going to work on your, because he had all the numbers. He had all his cholesterol numbers and his, yeah. his T level, all that. And I'm like, just let's sit, we're just gonna start lifting weights quick, you know, and that's gonna get that T up, and that's gonna so. Uh, and then when he went back, a 70 year old guy, he went back and um, and um, his T level has just gone up just lifting weights. So the other part of that is wow. beyond the T that you may be missing, just the, the act of doing oh, yeah. uh, anabolic type stuff like lifting weights and, and contracting muscle tissue and building muscle can jack that you know that up too. So. No yeah. doubt. And the, the honest truth is I feel like I have a lot more resilience and I'm not as fatigued at the end of the day. But the, the real honest truth is I won't have to be on the levels that I am right now. It was yeah. like to just get me back. Like a jump start. Yeah, it's just a jump start. And the honest truth is had I tried to do that with the levels as low as it was, I just keep getting sick over and over and over again trying to push. And the one thing I'm going to throw out there, because you and I had a pre-show, we were talking about this. This is not just a guy thing. So I don't no. want to make this a no. men's health oh, show, right? It, it's just not a guy's thing. It's a lady's thing too. They have testosterone. They, you know, they, they utilize that too, right? So let me, let me tell a story about my wife. The same thing happened to her. She, after I went and got my awesome workup from this badass dog, uh, she was like, I'm going to, I want to go too. <laughs> She got her levels tested and guys, if you're getting guys and gals, if you're going to get your levels tested, whether it's estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, whatever it is, you want to know the total levels and the free levels. Hormones are either bound to proteins or they're unbound. The ones that are bound to proteins are usable. The ones that are unbound, I'm uh, sorry, the ones that are bound to protein are not usable. They're kind of they're kind of in storage. The ones that are unbound are the ones that actually are functional. So a lot of times people can go get their levels tested and they may not be too far off with total. And then you look at the free and the free is really low and no wonder they have the symptoms that they do. So yeah. if you can get this testing, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you always ask to get the free hormone levels as well as the total protein bound levels as well. So she went and got hers checked and hers were low too. And she did a bioidentical cream. And sure enough, it's like she started to actually get more muscle mass. Her, out. Yeah. her metabolism went up. She had more resilience. 
Um, and obviously her dose was much, much, much lower than mine, but she had that spunk again and that, that pop again to where it just made the difference. It made, it made the difference to be able to go, now we have the energy to actually go work out, to actually yeah. go hike, to do fun things and get more stuff done. It's like you need that spark, man. Yeah. 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 So on that note, I want to transition because I know you're going to talk some, about some things that have been in the news recently. Right. And how, you know, how, how building muscle and guys, we're going to hammer you today on muscle building. Um, but I don't care what age you are. You need to be building muscle. Um, but, you know, and how really the whole definition of aging is loss of muscle tissue. Think about, you know, I don't care where you are. You can look at your grandparents, your great grandparents. Some of us are on the edge there. <laughs> Some of us are already. I'm not a grandparent yet, but I hope not anytime soon. But um. But as we as we age, the whole definition of aging is lo loss of muscle tissue. You know, you look at our grandparents and the ones that didn't work on. Now, the ones that worked on farms and stuff, they, they probably had more muscle tissue than the average guy because they were throwing bales of hay and stuff around. But um, but, you know, we kind of shrink up as we age. You know, we, we're not as tall as we were. Uh, our posture goes. And that's another big that's a whole other show. We talk about posture with 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 with, you know, muscle and how how it totally changes your structure right but so let's get into the whole like because i know you've got some great information you want to share on the whole like how this can keep you younger relative to your because we have biological age and we are chronological chron age chronological right? age and, and physiologic age or biological yeah, age. yeah right can you throw up my screen yeah so awesome. you got this uh, this is a yeah. you can go ahead and go over this, this uh, so me, uh, pull so this was off. This was in the news associated with uh, lean muscle and why it's important. And this is why we're we're hammering on this today to say, hey, what are you made of? You know, make sure that you're building your lean, particularly in this time that we have the time to actually do this. But they did some studies where they followed people for 10 years, men and women, and they looked at their muscles uh, before, during and after. And they tracked these people. And what they found was friends who were actively working out, lifting weights, doing strength training, doing cardio, and being active, their muscles inside were the equivalent of a 25-year-old. Wow. So ponder that, that you can actually be, and these, these were people who were in their 40s and 50s who were men and women who have done sort of long-term fitness and strength training, not just cardio, not just strength mm -hmm. training, but kind of the both, the combo, like you, you talk about, but yeah. they were able to actually not only have their muscles look like they were 25 years old, but right down here at the bottom, they had significantly less inflammation. And then they found that those that they tracked over 10 years who did not continue to work out and who did not continue to push themselves, they had more inflammation and more muscle tissue loss and aging in there. Now, one of the big key take home points that this uh, author puts right here and that one of the doctors talk about, and, and this is where, this is where you got to just kind of think about this. Yeah. That if you push it, like, even though you might, feel more inflammation, even though you might feel more aching and pain and hurt from strength training and from doing cardio training, eventually the muscle caps up. And it says, this guy here, Dr. Trapp, he says, even if inflammation gets in the way a bit at first, your muscles will respond and grow. And he says, eventually that should start to resemble people who've been working out long term. So it's never too late to start to build that lean uh, but yeah, and that's not even and this again. This is another show. That's not even the I can tell you a story of a, a, a woman I trained. She didn't even pick up weights until her mid 50s. Uh, jo Joan and she, uh, Joan Rowland, she survived a kidney transplant. She had some problem with the kidney kidney, got a 23 year old new kidney or no liver transplant. And uh, she's still living to this day. The only reason she got that liver transplant is guess what? She was fit. They don't give out body parts to wow. people that aren't fit anymore. Okay. But when she went to her physician, they did her bone density and almost to like what you said, this is a bone density. I don't want to get into bones, but 
um, tw- she, they're like, what have you been doing? You've got the bone density of a 25 year old female. They thought they had the wrong chart. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so it relates to that too, because obviously the bo- bones and yeah. joints and pins and ligaments, they all work together, right? So. Well, this is another area. So not only bones and joints and ligaments, but mm-hmm. other other systems as well. If we're talking about pancreas and blood sugar systems for pre-diabetes, diabetes, uh, metabolic type of issues. But here, when this article right here, this was this was a jaw dropper for me. It said that keeping muscles fit uh, is reduces your risk of heart disease by eighty yep. percent. Yep, eighty percent. There's not a. Medica- I would never get. There's 80%. not a medication. There's not a diet. There's not any supplement or anything else you can do to reduce the risk of your heart disease by 80, 80 percent. Like that's that's amazing. This is probably the best hack for heart disease. And I I knew I knew um, I'm going to put up a slide in a second that shows everybody all the benefits of strength training and building muscle. And there's a lot more than what you think. Um, We'll go over those in a second. But um, I would never expect an 80 percent. I think maybe 20%, 25%, yeah. but 80 is nuts. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things they found is that there's a new measure for um, like a heart stress test. They actually did a correlation. They said, uh, particularly for men, uh, if you can do 40 push-ups in a row, then you'll pass. Basically, that's a better measurement than getting on a treadmill and doing You can get in the military with 40 push-ups. I know. So (laughs) when I read that one, I read that one back um, back about six months ago. And uh, one of my boys, we were in the airport and I was like, oh my gosh, if you can do 40 push-ups. And he looked over at me and he was like, so can you do 40 push-ups? I said, (laughs) like in the middle of the airport, I go, I don't know. I said, oh no, you did it. So no, we actually both hit the ground. And you know, pumped out forty push-ups. You know, he would with he your kept wife going, standing on your back, right? He, no, he, he <laughs> kept going. He kept going to like fifty. I was like at forty. I was like, no wonder this is a cardio stress test. But they they figured out that when they did this with firefighters, and then they also did the correlating uh, cardiovascular stress test on a treadmill or injection. They figured out that this was a better predictor the push-up test, and I don't know what they found out for women, but 40 push-ups for men is a better actual predictor of heart disease than uh, yeah. than doing the other tests. And on that note, guys, I just popped this up, and we've kind of hit some of these, but um, you know, I, I, for years, I, I can't count how many females, I'm talking ladies now, that I've trained, and you get three, four weeks in with strength training, and they're, they're, you know, most people, are, they're, their homework is cardio, right? Like when you're a fitness trainer, most of what I do is building strength and to some extent, some of what you do too, you know, like yeah. functional stuff. And yeah. Um, and uh, this, this strength training is not working. I'm like, just give it six weeks, man. <laughs> okay. You are going to give your it girlfriends, time. your girlfriends will notice before you're noticed that you're leaning out. And with women, it's all about dress sizes. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to have all those, wear all, wear all those accessories the ladies do, but ladies know by their dress size. And, and it's really, what we're talking about here is inches, but it truly is the missing link to weight management, to weight loss. And it kind of kind of sucks for the person who's not fit, but the person that is fit, then, then that, that, the more fit you are, you burn body fat like rocket fuel instead of a clunky engine yeah you know because that added muscle tissue you literally have to burn calories for your body to maintain it or keep it on your frame that's so, so true you could be at your desk doing you could be on a zoom meeting right now okay let's you start could, zoom you, you could burning. be watching a movie and still yeah. be burning a high caloric exactly yeah so like i got i mean i've got them all listed here obviously it's, a lot of these are common sense you guys know about this i already i already told you my joan story about you know in her Guys, at the time she got, she was in her 60s at that point. She didn't have her transplant until her late 70s. She was 68 or 7. She was 68, I think, when she had that transplant. Um, and bone density. Um, posture. Again, that's another show. Um, but improved blood flow. So that's pretty interesting. And I think this would relate to your heart point because your body will literally, if, like a, a muscle, if you guys look at like a piece of muscle tissue in your frame, 
your body will literally, as you're building muscle, it'll, to nourish the muscle because it's being worked, your body will lay down more capillaries. Yeah, more blood vessels. And then, and then blood flow improves, and who doesn't need better blood flow? Well, the other thing you is know? because there's more pipelines being laid down, there's less resistance and backflow. The resistance yeah. and backflow is what actually causes higher blood pressure. Which is so, systolic, no, diastolic. That's oh. the pressure coming, I always get them confused. Now, What's the now, pressure coming back? I have no idea. Now I'm, I'm, you're way above my- I think it's diastolic is the pressure of, of, of pulling the, drawing the blood back to the heart so it can pump again. Yeah, well, it's still, if you have less capillaries, it's like sucking from a teeny tiny straw. Yeah. So it's going to have to work harder to get it back and push harder to get yeah. it out. And the more lean you build, the more capillaries and pipe networks that you have, the easier it is for it to push the blood out and bring it back, push it out, yep. because there's just a better flow instead of having to do like a garden hose where you're putting your thumb on the end and it's having to create a lot of pressure to push it through. Yeah. The big one too, and I, 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 again, it's just something you learn over the years, of, you know, training people for 20 something odd years is uh, improved REM sleep because your body has to go into a deeper REM phase because really REM is your repair mode. That's where your body really takes all the nutrients and that you've taken in during the day, protein and all these things. And it goes into repair mode. It's like, oh, this dude worked his biceps. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go in repair mode. So the biggest thing I hear from people that don't strength train or not, or I'm not too serious about it. And they kind of ramp it up is holy crap. Like I'm sleeping like a baby. I'm like, yeah, you're going into deeper REM and you can prove that out with a Apple watch and stuff. Now you can see the REM improve on a watch. Well, well now I'm going to really geek out here. So <laughs> when you're, when you're pushing muscle and you're actually working that muscle, even if it's for 15 minutes, it produces more serotonin to be released in the blood serotonin converts to GABA at night and GABA is what you need to put you into deep restorative sleep. Yeah. G GABA's, I mean, there, I know there's supplements you can take. GABA is kind of in that B complex vitamin category, but and GABA is like, like brain focused stuff too. But yeah, but, yeah, but, it, but if you, if you're dumping that serotonin in, not only are you helping with anxiety, helping with stress, you just yeah. feel better. Uh, that stuff sets you up to have a better night of sleep because it converts over to GABA. GABA is something that ramps your brain down and relaxes it. And then the melatonin kicks in and you go to sleep. So and you, you know the difference too, because you'll wake up and go, wow, I felt like I slept. Yeah. Like yeah. A lot of times, you know, well, all of us do this, you know, you, you don't get enough sleep or even if you do get enough sleep and you haven't really been exercising, you still can kind of get up and go, oh, you know, you kind of crawl out of bed. Oh, I've true. found that yeah. the times in my life that I'm really hitting the weights, um, you you get up and it's like, all right, I'm ready to go, you know. Uh, reduced risk of injury, that's a kind of a no-brainer. But um, when I talk to my runners about this, you know, any exercises, the, all, all the patients you see too, um, it just makes you more durable. Um, your body, I always look at muscle as shock absorption. Muscle, uh, muscle's pretty solid. It's like adding shock absorbers to your body. Uh, you guys know what fat does. It just jiggles around. It doesn't do much for you. Okay. But muscle really, and then that really makes your joint structure more stable. So you don't have all these, you know, you're not just, you know, to have these, this, um, kind of quirky movement with your posture and stuff when you're moving in space. And y'all strength training does not have to be complex. It doesn't have to be done at a gym. It doesn't have to be done with machines. There is so much stuff that you can do with body weight. And there's two ways to help to build strength. Number one, you can either do high repetition, low load. That means keeping your reps up at 25, 30 reps without having a bunch of load on there. Or number two, you increase the load really high and you do low reps. Now that's where you have to have bars and plates and stuff like yeah. that. Like that's high risk for joints and for backs and for necks, et cetera. But if you keep those repetitions high, I mean, I just challenge you, if you do anything for 30 reps, pushing, pulling, pressing, squatting, you're gonna feel the burn, number one. Number two, uh, you're gonna be sore the next day. And number three, you're going to go, wow, my heart was racing. Like my heart rate was up, but it is the quickest and best way to gain strength. 
is staying with that high repetition. You can always decrease the reps and increase the load four to six weeks out. But like to get started, my gosh, like do some push-ups on Just your- lift stuff. Like, lift like push stuff up, that you normally don't lift. Do right? push-ups against the wall if the, if on the floor is too much, yeah. you know, or do it on a bed. So that way your feet are on a bed, but you're actually, do it on a counter. Like if you have to resort to doing it on a counter versus on the floor, do that. If you've got to do squats while holding on to something, do that. Like just get started and just do high reps. Yeah. Um, so we kind of covered that. I mean, there's a lot of benefits. And like I said, each one of those points could be a show. Yeah. <laughs> we could go crazy with this. Do it but, deeper you know, so we're really kind of building these layers, guys. On you know, We're trying to give you as many, many reasons that you can to, to lift, literally lifting things you normally don't lift in your everyday life in a safe fashion, have so many repetitions per set. Yeah. Again, we could do another show on mesocycles and micro microcycles and how to how to get benefit from tweaking the sets and the rep uh, ranges like uh, the doc was just talking about. So I want to transition into something I was thinking about. I was thinking of my grandmother the other day, and my grandmother was pretty fit. She was a big swimmer. Um, um, lost her husband. My mom lost her her dad, and she lost her husband. My mom was fourteen. Um, and she lost her husband when she was 40. So as a kid, here's my grandmother, because I was born, my mom had me when she was 19, and I had a pretty fit grandma. Like she would go to the spa, they call it, it was kind of a president first lady, but it was the spa, but back then yeah. the spa was a, it was a sweatshop, it was a gym, it was the Houstonian, right? Yep. And she would just, I mean, she would literally spend an hour in the pool. I don't know even what she did because I was. She just she'd come back with her swim gear and her little little cap on. And then I remember watching Jack Lalane with her. You know, the show. This this just jacked up. At the time, he wasn't old. He was probably probably her age. He was probably in his early fifties at the time. Probably forty, late forties. Longest running fitness show ever. I think it ran 34 years on network television. So you guys got to think about that. I can't remember. Wow. It was a date. I want to say it was a daytime show. This is pre Richard Simmons. This is pre Jane Fonda. Um, in fact, I want to, I'm going to go to screen share because I want to talk about kind of the history of strength training and guys, it's always been there. CrossFit didn't develop interval training. Jack LaLanne did in the 1940s. Okay. He was born in 1914. He opened up his first gym at the age of 21 in the thirties. Um, and back then there weren't too many gyms. There weren't too many places you could just go and lift weights, you know, other guy, other guy I think of along those lines was, um, Atlas. What was his name? I can't remember his first name, but Charles so, Atlas. Charles Atlas. I was going to say Charles Atlas. Atlas. If you want to Google that one, I'm, I'm going total old school, old school today. Okay. But um, let me pull up screenshot. I want to show you a picture of these of two guys I'm going to talk about today, which I think are two of the fathers of fitness. And this is pre-1990, 1980s, okay? Um, let me go over and pull it up real quick. Um, uh, me, can you guys, can you see that, J.D.? I can, yep. So these two guys. So let's, let's talk about Jack. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to send you some links so you can read a great article by James Clear. You can go to jamesclear.com. Great, thoughtful guys. He's got a new book out called Atomic Habits. And uh, you can check that out. But he's got a whole story on Jack LaLanne, which is it's just amazing what this guy did in his lifetime. Um, he swam the San Francisco Bay multiple times, pulling with something attached to him, pulling a, a boat. Wow. I mean, he was kind of the evil Knievel of fitness, okay? You guys remember Evil Knievel and going over the Snake River on the, oh, the motorcycle? Yeah. yeah, well, he was like, he just did crazy stuff. But every day, this guy would show up in my grandmother's living room, and she would be doing leg lifts and stuff and had a little little set of dumbbells in the corner, okay? Um, so what he really preached was muscle, muscle, you've got to build muscle um, in, uh, in every show. Um he recently, I think he passed away, I want to say in 2011. You guys want to see a really cool interview. Pull up Howard Stern's interview with Jack LaLanne and his wife. And at that time, he was still alive, but he was in his 90s. I think he died in his late 90s. Wow. Mid to late 90s. I want to say he was about 91 on that show. It was probably early, like 20. I think he passed away in 2011. 
But that's a scream if you want to pull that one up. Because if you know how you can imagine Howard Stern and this old guy that was still jack, jacked up in his 90s. And he was also, by the way, this is an interesting story. He was the father of juicing. He's credited as being oh, the father of he's the juice that's guy. He's literally, where he's the juice yeah. guy. Now I remember him. The other thing, a lot of the equipment you guys first saw in gyms for you guys that are my age and mid-50s or older, uh, the first line of equipment that came out was Nautilus. A lot of those Nautilus machines he has patents on. He actually develops for the first fitness machines with pulleys. Okay, so this guy was all over the place. A brilliant businessman. Um, uh, so anyways, everything this guy preached, if you want to do your research, everything this guy preached going back to the 30s is, guess what? Everything that CrossFit is borrowing from, everything that Orange Theory is doing. And it was a really simple thing. You have to build muscle. You don't have a choice. Yeah. If you're going to be a runner and all you do is run, it's not going to happen. You're going to be skinny fat. Now let's let's stop. <laughs> let's get yeah. bump in right there. Yeah. Because having been a sports injury specialist, sports medicine doc for 20 years, and having taken care of thousands of marathoners and triathletes, particularly the ones who don't do strength training and who start the season with well, I've never done this before. I really want to lose some weight. I'm looking forward to it. And if you did the math on it and you actually did the calorie count, you would assume that through a year of marathon or triathlon training, you would dump some weight. I mean, if it was as simple yeah. as calorie in, calorie out, which is not, it's it actually – it's not that simple, but it's much more simple in another way. It's weird. We're looking at the wrong thing. Should be focusing on this. We'll talk about on another show. We'll talk yeah. about this one's what you're made of. The uh, Another show will be like, what energy are you using? What fuel system are you using? Oh, yeah. What are you tapping into? Because that's how you, that's how you wax or wane your muscle or your fat mass. Depends yep. on what energy system you're using. But that's where the where you literally changing that body composition. You change the, the body composition. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, it's simpler than you think. It's not about going out there and doing high intensity cardio and then pushing hard, hard, hard weight. I mean, we'll talk about the hacks there. But this right here, I saw through an entire season multiple triathletes and marathoners get fit fat meaning they actually became more fit. They went from being able to run a couple miles to being able to finish a marathon. They went from yeah. being able to do, you know, hardly anything on a, you know, bike in the water and running to being able to actually do a two mile swim, 120 mile bike and a full marathon in an Ironman triathlon. And the injury rate goes down. Sky high. <laughs> Well, the well, thing up, is, yeah, we're up, up, up because the as, as they're as they're losing muscle mass through that long endurance training and not maintaining or building it through strength training, literally they are changing what they're made of. They end the season being in the most fit cardiovascular shape of their life, but actually having the most fat on their body, less muscle. And then they wonder, why do I keep gaining weight? Why do I keep things just aren't fitting well, and, get, and getting fit. and getting injured and getting injured because you have less, you have less spring resilience and endurance yeah. and kind of this bounce springy pliability because your muscles are deteriorating. So that's one of the big things is that there's a big misnomer of, let me just go start running. Let me get on the treadmill. Let me get on the, the elliptical. I'm going to start cycling. But you'll see that the only cyclists who are lean are those who spend a lot of time doing strength training. And they also mix in some high intensity interval training. Yeah. The ones who go out and can ride 100 miles, you know, who aren't doing that, they're going to be rounder, bigger. And the same is true with runners. So here's the good news, guys. Um, you know, this doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. Um, I, when I think about these old school guys, and I'm going to quickly talk about Cobra Bailey before we go into Q&A. But old school is new school. Okay, this this coronavirus has kind of proved that out. Um, I think, um, well, let's put it this way. 
the, the same industry that I've been in for 23 years after 10 years of corporate HR, uh, a corporate HR executive guy, um, is the same industry that's made this way too complicated for people, to be honest with you. And machines are good, yet they're bad. A lot of machines, not knowing it, like I, I had my son at 24-Hour uh, Fitness before they shut down, and I was explaining to him, and that's not a good machine, and here's why. Because you can't build a machine for every human being, but I can put a pair of dumbbells in your hands, and there you go. As yeah. long as the range of motion is is correct and biomechanically correct, it, it works. Yeah. It challenges you in a different way. Um, so a lot of these what, these guys were proponents of free weights and other things. And Jack Lang, uh, he did. I remember doing my, you know, doing kettlebell stuff too. And now guess what? Kettlebells back in a big way. It kind of went away for about 20, 30 years. Why the jogging craze? The, the other business I do got hot, right? Yeah. So with coronavirus, you know, everyone's you know they're doing Zoom workouts and and you're literally forced to go to your local sporting goods store, like an academy or Dick's Sporting Goods, wherever you, you live. And buying the old school stuff and throwing it in the corner. And guess what? If you stick to that stuff, it still works. It's back to the future. <laughs> you know? The same stuff that worked that Jack Lane was doing in the 30s still works. So um, big gyms have probably changed forever. Yeah. I don't see. They're now in the um, janitorial business. I hate to say it. But most of what they're going to have to do now is keep a clean gym. Not a business I want to be in. I'm kind of glad I'm not at the downtown Y anymore in Houston. True. And I'm in a small little quaint little studio. Um, the other guy I want to talk about is Covert Bailey. I got him up on the screen now. And uh, his book is out of print now. But this is a book I want to share with you guys. It, a huge part in my life. I was a young fitness trainer. I was still in corporate. I was trying to get certified. I was going to night school to get certified. Thought I want to do this trainer thing. Did some consulting work for this nuclear power plant here in Texas. So I had a bridge because I didn't know if I wanted to do this or not. So learning about Krebs cycles and having flashbacks to chemistry class back in high school, having to learn about all this metabolic stuff to get certified. And I just happened to run across this book by Covert. He's the guy you used to see him, Jay, you know, uh, Jay Doc on the Health Rider commercials, that yeah. Health Rider equipment there. Yeah. And he had his look, he actually had that same blue shirt he wore all the time and um, read this book. And I'm like, it, it, he literally took all this very complicated stuff and weaned it down and said, listen, here's something called the Krebs cycle. But let me break it down. By the way, he was an MIT grad. He was a ge geology major. And then he got interested in nutrition and he got a master's degree in nutrition from MIT. Went to MIT. Grew up, he, he, he's a Boston guy. And he wrote this, this breakthrough book, uh, Smart Exercise. If you guys want to read anything that just literally breaks down and just totally busts through all these crazy myths that you hear about, just read this book. And by the way, I pulled it up on Amazon. You can get it used in a hardback for 30 cents right now because it is out of print. You, you're not going to be able to find, you're not going to be able to buy it brand new, even in paperback. Okay. So his whole philosophy, and he's got one little chapter in there. He talks about muscle and he, kind of to the, to, the, to the tune of today's show, he called it King Muscle. Everything starts with muscle tissue because it has this whole, now you got to fuel the muscle and you got to fuel the body with the right nutrition. But if you're not building muscle and you're not doing that along with like what Jack did, he swam, his big thing was swimming and strength training. Um, you know, you got to have the three components of, of fitness in my opinion, there's got to be proper nutrition. You got to fuel the body right. You got to have um, strength training stuff. You have to do stuff that builds and maintains muscle tissue, and you have to do some cardiovascular fitness to tune up the heart and get that get that fat burn that you get from at a higher level when you add that muscle tissue to your frame. So they all they all work together. It's like adding putting one and one and one together and getting ten exponential benefits from that. So I just want to throw that book out. I want to I want to go into too much detail, but. You guys want to burn 30 cents right now on Amazon? It's the best 30 cents you'll probably ever invest in fitness in probably the next century. So I'd highly recommend that book. Um, well, let's let's uh, let's. You want to go to some Q and A? Absolutely. Let's hit some Q and A. I've been reading through a couple of these right here. Uh, okay, Luisa, you got this. You got Luisa the says, Luisa says this is hard after 40. I'm going to say yes, it is. I mean, I'm 46, and that's the reason why I would suggest 
go get tested. Seriously, go get tested. Go get your hormones tested. Make sure they're balanced. It's just the best thing to get started with, particularly after the age of 40. I mean, I got mine tested when I was 30 and I tracked them all the way till I was 46. And finally, I was like, got to do something about it. It's it's it just makes it so yeah. much, so much easier. And you're not fighting that battle because when you stress your muscles, it's either one or two things can happen. One, you're going to have to take three, four or five days to recover from that strength training bout. Yeah. Or if your hormones are correct, it will only probably take you a day or two to recover. So it's like you're, you can do this without having the proper hormones, but it's going to take you longer to recover and it's going to actually take you longer to get where you want to get to. So get your hormones right, get some bioidentical stuff, um, you know, versus having to, you know, take the, the other stuff that's out there. But that's what I would say on that. And we've got a, a rich, if Richard had this to here, Richard, if you've got a question, just I don't see it in the feed, but you said you wanted to ask our opinion on something. So if you think of something, just put up. Well, you guys have a question. Thing is, can you can you throw up our our numbers? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So That's hey guys, if you have a question for us, and either you're watching this now or you're watching this sometime in the future, here's our here's our numbers right here. Yeah, and by all means, guys, call us. And this us. these are not burner numbers. Like these are our <laughs> numbers. So These aren't, this you, is not the bat phone number, right? If you call us or text us, like it's coming direct to us. Now <laughs> I always work better off a of text because I can respond to texts in between patients and I can respond to texts here or there. Whereas I can't always listen to a long voice message um, and can't always make a long uh, voice phone call. I only have minimal hours a week to actually get that done. So yeah, here do, you have that, do you have that slide yeah, for us? That up. Perfect. That should work. There we go. Can you guys see that? All right. So there we go. There's our information. You also have our emails. So if you want to drop us an email and yep. that works better, there's there's our emails. Uh, I would love it if you went to at Dr. Hassenbank and liked that page. That would be fantastic um, to follow us there. Let's see what else we got. We got. Yeah. And then the big guys, um, the big thing too, guys, is man, the best thing to do is probably subscribe to us on YouTube or, you know, like us or put notifications on, on, on our Facebook. We have a Facebook page for the show now. I'm going to pull that up, pop that up in a second. Smarter, not harder show, facebook.com slash harder, smarter, not harder show. And you guys can like the page there and turn your notifications on. So, you know, when we go live or we post any type of content. Okay. Um, so coach we got louisa also said how do you strength train at home that that really is another topic for another time it's a great yeah. fantastic question but we i mean we could do an entire segment on that right there uh so maybe that's something we put let on me, the hit list let me pull put that on the hit list yeah like we already had like today i think i mentioned 10 show ideas <laughs> yeah i know okay. I let, know. Me, let me pull up i'm gonna pull up robert thompson here he's actually he coaches he coaches for in-flight running here in houston Nice. So his, his question's on there. During peak marathon training to get 35 to 45 miles per week, this is about all the time I can spare. I think think I could get better performance by swapping some some run time for strength. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but one thing I want to stress to Robert and everybody here, um, when I write my programs for my clients and we do HIIT workouts, guys, you can knock out a HIIT workout. You can go, you can go 10 movements. 10 old school movements and go through a hit workout, three rounds of say three to four exercises, set one, set two, round one, round two, CrossFit style. And um, I, that comes in it. When I write my schedule, I actually put the time on there because they're going 30 seconds on, I'd get a Tabata timer and do it. Runners love Tabata timers because they don't like to keep still for more than like five seconds. But you know, 30 seconds on, 35 seconds on, 15 off to transition to your next move and you just put a Tabata timer and hit go, you can get a two set, one set routine, you can do it in 17 minutes. Two set routine usually comes in about 34. Three set routine, if you wanna go crazy, you're still in under an hour. And you're a but, sweaty mess when you're done and works well. But here's the thing I'm gonna tell you right now, Robert, is that because this is not peak season right now, make the most of the time you have right now. Your strength 
and your lean mass needs to be built off season and maintained in season. It's exactly. real hard unless you're sleeping 10 to 12 hour days. It's real hard to get the rest that you need to recover from high volume running or triathloning and intense strength training to build muscle. You can do it, but it requires the hours of your ass in bed to be able to actually let your body recover from all that right now. So that, so right now, build, Bill Lee, that's the reason I'm, why I'm, we're just, you know, JD, I'm, right I'm laughing because I know Robert well. Like Robert is the poster child of in-flight running. Nice. Okay? Like when we do our coffee talks, there's spreadsheets. Oh, I <laughs> love it. There's and spreadsheets. That's sweet. But to that Man, point, my own heart. Um, the tough time, the tough thing right now for runners, guys, there's that much to train for. Yeah. That's good news if you want to get into strength training. I would, uh, I would, because a lot of us have had to delay our season. Um, and like what, to JD's point, it's kind of like, you know, why the Texans go through spring training, they get muscled up and they get strong so they can actually get through the season without being an injured mess, even though injuries still happen because it's a contact sport. Good news about triathlon and running. It's not a contact sport, but you still need that durability. You probably want to jack up that muscle tissue so you can, you know, you can get through the rigors of the season and get in those peak runs mid summer, late, late fall. Okay. Now you, you mentioned the Texans. Here's something interesting. They actually restrict cardiovascular activity from power athletes like football players. They get their cardio off season and they build their mass. And then what ends up happening is they restrict them to like a 30 minute cardio routine, nothing longer because they'll actually start decreasing in mass and strength. So that's the reason why you also want to build your mass and your lean off season. So that way you can try to maintain it because you're not, it's going to be really hard to gain while you're ramping up volume. Yeah. All right, guys. Any other questions? You guys put them in the feed. Um, I don't see, uh, I don't see any, uh, any, I think we're good. YouTube questions. Yeah. So, um, we, we already gave you all your, our information, guys, so uh, if you missed it, you can just rewind this video and pop that up. Um, well, here's what I'm going to do for you. All these different resources and articles and books and things that we recommended today, I'm going to put, let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put some posts in Facebook um, in the feed on the top so you guys can see those on YouTube. Um, if you're watching on YouTube. In the in the notes section, the paragraph below, I'll put all those links to all those things for you. We'll probably get those up by tomorrow. Just give us a day to do that, okay? Um, and then, you know, I guess if how would you want to wrap this up, Doc? Well, I'm gonna say, like us, follow us. Please tell people about us. If you like this, then you think it's applicable to somebody else. Forward it to them. Let them know about it. Talk about it. Um, we really we got you back. We're here. And we, we want to keep helping you work smarter, not harder. If you think of things that you would like us to cover more, put them in the comments. Yeah, that's then, a good idea. And then we're always going to check them and they come up with new ideas for us to be able to do. Maybe there's something that we can do an offshoot from a live and just offer a webinar on something if somebody's super interested, if there's a lot of people who are super interested in certain topics. Yeah, and one thing I'll just uh, leave you with is um, – Hey man, life is short, right? And we're all made of a bunch of cells. And what exercise does, and I'm gonna share another article with you down the road from Parade Magazine, that just just totally, I'll share with all my clients, it was like a mind blow, but you know, it's the body is the most incredible machine ever invented, yeah. ever. Um, and you send signals to it every day um, by lack of activity, by activity, by which what type of fuel you put in, by what type of fuel you don't put in. Um, and all these signals literally tell the, the cells to do two, one of two things, either thrive and live or get ready for death. Now, that sounds real morbid, but that's the honest truth. So what these tips we're going to throw at you guys, and we're going to even get into some productivity things to make your life easier. But um, they're all designed to give you very practical cutting through the BS stuff to just keep you thriving so you can keep, you know, you can be pretty youthful even as you age. Okay. There's a definitely a way to do that. Um, and so we're going to keep dishing it out to you. Okay. 
Uh, you guys can also email us. I forgot to mention, Doc. You can always email us. We've got a Gmail account up, smarternothardershow at gmail.com. So if you have anything, just kind of, you know, I would love to have your feedback on the show, what things like you would like to see as the doc mentioned, or let us know how we're doing. We're flying by the seat of our pants. We're figuring this out. I got my new yeah. MacBook. Yeah. New, new MacBook arrived. So uh, sweet. All my runners are going to rip on me on that because I've been ripping on Apple for about 10 years now. But oh, anyway, that's another story. So we'll let you go, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See ya. You guys have a great week. And tune right. in next week, 1 p.m. Central Time for episode number three. Have a good one. Take See care. Bye-bye.